While modern digital multimeters are generally high impedance devices, typically between 10 and 11 mega ohms on DC, voltmeters haven't always had high impedance. This can be important to know for several situations. For example, if you're repairing or restoring older equipment and measuring voltages at test points and comparing those measurements to values in the service manual, then it's important to know how those were measured in the first place. Some old manuals, for example, note that test point voltages are measured with a 20 kilo ohm per volt meter. If this is the case in a project you're working on, then you should not expect to measure the same values of voltage using a modern digital multimeter. This point was made in a viewer comment recently, left in response to video number 21, which was the final video in the series where we restored an ICO 221 vacuum tube voltmeter. In this video, I thought it would be good to go into a little bit of the detail as to why measurements made with older VOM type meters won't agree with modern DMMs or even VTVMs in many circumstances. When analog meters are employed to make a DC measurement, a pointer or vane is deflected over a scale. The degree of deflection depends on a current flowing through the meter's coil, which is mounted in a magnetic field from a permanent magnet in the meter assembly. When a circuit is probed across a potential difference, a current flows through the probe leads and the meter coil, which produces another magnetic field, and the interaction between the meter field and the field due to the permanent magnet causes the coil to turn about a pivot. In this way, the vane is deflected and a voltage is read off a calibrated scale displayed on the meter face. This is known as de Arsenville movement. The current is limited by the resistance of the voltmeter circuit, or, in more complicated terms, the DC input impedance of the instrument. The sensitivity of such an instrument is generally quoted in terms of ohms per volt, and the effective impedance of the voltmeter is simply the maximum value of a particular DC scale multiplied by the sensitivity. For an example, a very basic VOM, or volt-ohm milliammeter from the 1950s and 60s era, was the triplet 666. That's the meter right here. The 666 featured a 1 kilo ohm per volt sensitivity, so that, for example, on the 10 volt range, it had a 10 kilo ohm input impedance. A more sensitive instrument, such as the Simpson 260, would have a 20 kilo ohm per volt sensitivity, so that on a 2.5 scale, it presented an input impedance of 50 kilo ohms. Unlike VOMs, vacuum tube voltmeters, or VTVMs, amplify low voltages and have a very high DC impedance, which is independent of the voltage scale. Thus, VTVMs don't have an input sensitivity defined in ohms per volt, but rather present a constant DC input impedance. For reasons that I don't really know, many or maybe even most of the service grade VTVMs were 11 mega ohm input impedance instruments, although the ICO 221 that we restored was a 25 mega ohm instrument. Digital multimeters are typically 11 mega ohm meters, very similar to VTVMs, although some present an 8 or 9 or even a 10 mega ohm input impedance. Why is this important? Well, it's important because the voltmeter becomes part of the circuit it's probing when it makes a measurement. So to clarify these statements, let's think about a simple circuit, a uh, battery that is uh, connected to two resistors in series. And let's think about the voltage dropped across R2. So we can write that uh, in this simple voltage divider circuit as the voltage dropped across R2 is V2 uh, equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 multiplied by V. Now suppose we probe across R2 with a voltmeter we've drawn here. Theoretically that shouldn't disturb the circuit if we had a perfect voltmeter, but in reality of course it does. And it does that because a meter has a finite and not an infinite input impedance. So the circuit is altered, actually, by this additional resistance from the meter, Rm, which is added in parallel with R2. And of course we can simplify that into 
again, just a simple series circuit with the second resistor being an equivalent resistance of the product over the sum. So REQ will be R2 times RM over R2 plus RM. And so the voltmeter now will measure the potential difference across this parallel combination. So in this expression, just look for a moment if we let RM become infinite. So we end up with R2 times the quantity RM over R2 plus RM. So we actually get R2 times something really big over something really big plus something small. And that is essentially 1. So we get R equivalent as equal to R2 in the case of a perfect voltmeter or a voltmeter with an extremely high or an infinite impedance. Um, so if we go ahead and work out the math just a little bit more, you can show now that the voltage that the voltmeter now will read <clears throat> is just going to be equal to R equivalent over R1 plus R equivalent, right, the voltage divider circuit, times the applied voltage. And uh, that quote-unquote simplifies into this expression here, which is a little bit more complex. Well, this expression probably becomes a bit more informative if we look at some specific values for R1, R2 voltage, and of course, the resistance of the meter. Well, to make the math a bit easier, let's just consider an applied voltage of V equal 12 volts and R1 to be 10 kilo ohms and R2 to be 2 kilo ohms. If we do that, then the voltage dropped across R2 becomes 2 volts, and the voltage dropped across R1 is 10 volts. So let's do a quick demonstration now of the case of measuring that with a modern bench DMM with a uh, DC impedance of 11 mega ohms and a classic triplet model 666R VOM with a input impedance of 1 kilo ohm per volt. Just hooked up a little series uh, resistor where I've got the 10 kilo ohm resistor there and the 2 kilo ohm resistor there. And I'm driving the circuit, I'm feeding the circuit with a uh, new power supply on the bench, a Siglent SPD3303XE, a really nice triple power supply. Okay, so I think you can see here, zoom in a little bit, that I'm feeding it with 12 volts and I'm restricting the current to be no more than 10 milliamps so that you know that's uh, about 0.12 watts being delivered to the circuit which shouldn't give any problem to the quarter watt or maybe their half watt resistors. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the power on, the voltage on, and I'm going to probe with the bench DMM which is a BK Precision bench meter. And uh, remember we said that just working out the voltage divider math that it should drop 2 volts across that uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor. And with the 11 mega ohm input impedance voltmeter, we see that in fact we measure uh, 2.0 volts. So now let us disconnect the modern bench meter and let's connect now the triplet VOM and uh, let's get the polarity right. All right and let's just zoom in here having trouble focusing here. There we go. All right, it's a bit of parallax in that shot. And there's still a little bit of parallax in that shot. Okay, 
So I think you can see on this meter, so this is the 10 volt scale, that's the lowest scale on this meter. So we're looking at this down here. So we're at 1 volt and they're 0.2 volt division, so it's 1.246 and halfway to 8, so that would be 7. So 1.7 volts on the triplet 666R. I think you can see that we measure different voltages and that's about a 14 percent difference from the value that we expect just by doing simple voltage division math. We expect to drop 2 volts but the triplet is measuring 1.7 volts. What would we have expected if we worked out the more complicated formula here for these parameters uh, for different values of meter impedance? Well, I made a table uh, based on different meters, uh, including the ICO meter that we restored, and it had a 25 mega ohm input impedance. And uh, I actually did the measurement, <clears throat> didn't show it on camera um, because it's you know pretty boring, but uh, what I ended up with was measuring 1.85 volts. And you think, well, that's pretty disappointing because that's a very high impedance meter. But remember that the accuracy is really pretty crummy by modern standards. It was a 3% accuracy of full-scale deflection. Uh, and so on that voltage range, the uh, 0 to 5 volts DC range, uh, that means that we would expect to have a reading for 2 volts anywhere between 1.85 volts and uh, 2.15 volts. Okay, so not terribly informative but at least within spec. For the uh, BK Precision 5491B which is an 11 mega ohm impedance meter for DC, the theoretically uh, expected number, that is just by evaluating this formula, is uh, 1.999697 volts. And what we actually measured was 2.0056 volts. So, um, you know, pretty much bang on the nose there. Uh, I don't have a Simpson 260 in my inventory, but uh, that's a VOM that has a 20 kilo ohm per volt sensitivity. And the lowest voltage range that you can measure on that is 0 to 2.5 volts on the lowest scale. So that presents an input impedance of 50 kilo ohms. And the formula uh, that we just derived works out to an expected measurement of 1.935 volts. Now, we just showed the triplet 666R. This is a 1 kilo ohm per volt sensitivity meter on the 10 volt scale that presents an input impedance of 10 kilo ohms. Uh, and the formula suggests that it should measure 1.714 volts. And in fact, we measured 1.7 volts. So if my vacuum tube voltmeter were a bit better calibrated on the 5 volt scale, there would be essentially no difference in measurement between that and the modern BK Precision uh, digital multimeter, DMM. The Simpson slips a small amount uh, and the triplet slips even more. If you were measuring such a value with a DMM or a VTVM in perhaps a more complicated circuit and you were expecting a value of 1.7 volts because a manual listed a test point as reading 1.7 volts. And if that was uh, predicated on the folks at the factory writing the test manual using a 1 kilo ohm per volt meter, then you might think that something was wrong elsewhere in the circuit if, if you were probing it with a, a modern DMM. Because you would measure not 1.7 volts, but you'd probably measure 2 volts. That should probably bother you because something being off 14% probably merits a little bit of attention. Well, 
In the comment to video number 21, the viewer pointed out that because of issues such as this, low impedance analog voltmeters are still good things to have on the workbench. And this is absolutely true. Unlike vacuum tube voltmeters and digital multimeters, the older VOMs absolutely have their place, especially if you work on vintage electronics, uh, but also for other reasons too. I want to thank the viewer for his or her comments. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching.